All right. So every 30 something, 40 something, I'm almost there. EDC enthusiast seems to find themselves at some point visiting the best damn EDC. And why wouldn't you find yourself there? I mean, big influencer when it comes to Instagram and X, I guess it's called X now, not Twitter. And of course, the YouTubes. Now, there are those that have more subscribers than Taylor Martin from the Best Damn EDC. But when it comes to views and engagement and return viewership, he's pretty high swinging for the fences. And let's start off now by drinking my YouTube hater aid, taking a sip. Ah. Hater aid is something when you want something, but you don't quite yet have it. He has this YouTube thing figured out, at least for our space, the EDC outdoor survival. Well, he doesn't really do survival type stuff, enthusiast type content. This is not his first rodeo. And of course, when I went down the rabbit hole of everyday carry, I kind of ended up on the carry commission best damn EDC discipleship. And when I went down that hole, I saw the slick videos, the great Instagram posts, the very dark meek colors, the balmy shots. It all just kind of grabbed me by the balls. Pause. Ooh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. But before we jump into all that stuff, let's talk about Taylor Martin. Who is he? So he is a YouTuber, I think. I think that's what he mainly does. But he started off as a ghostwriter, according to his LinkedIn, and he kind of transitioned slowly but surely, always kind of been in the creative space. He was a writer, a video producer, and he started getting off into like outdoorsy and electronic type items. He was featured on CNET, et cetera, et cetera. And then the EDC community, Chef's Kiss, took off like a rocket ship. Fantastic video work, great looking videos, and very inclusive for his community. It just worked really, really well. He's coming out of North Carolina, gives that homey feel, pleasantly plump, kind of like me, has long flowy locks, just everything is looking fantastic. Some of you guys may be asking in the comments, but X, why are you hating? What is the big deal? What do you mean that he might be bad for EDC? Well, let me explain. Now I mentioned all of his endeavors before, but he really seemed to catch widespread fame when it came to his YouTube channel. Been a big fan of some of the content, but I kind of see where it is necessarily could be slightly poisonous for the EDC community. What seemed to really propel him to being known in the EDC space is at least one of the first videos I ever saw was 25 best budget gear options under $20. It was a great video. It fit my niche very well, meaning I want to find some great gear. I don't want to spend more than 20 bucks. I want it to be useful. And it was fed to me on a platter. Now, over that time frame, he released that the infotainment educational EDC content for quite a while. He kind of transitioned to like sponsored gear reviews and eventually his own merch line. Shout out to my merch line because I got one as well. But for the past few years, he's kind of just been chugging along, showcasing items, but they seem to be a lot of grail type items, items that don't really seem to be used very, very much. And a whole lot of pocket checks. It's not a lot of things that I think that are very useful for the EDC community. For instance, one of my buddies, he's a male nurse. He's been carrying a Benchmade Griptilian for like four or five years. It is beat up. He doesn't sharpen it enough. It's all scratched up, scales all over the place. The action could be better. He wants a new knife. He gets on YouTube. He sees the best damn EDC, and he absolutely thinks that we are all out of our mind, wondering why is every single knife showcased, at least ones that he was kind of interested in, well over $200, flashlights over $300, items that didn't look used he wasn't really sure could he trust his opinion he being taylor martins if he has his my buddy has a griptilian which is clearly used has all sorts of scathing and scratch marks on it and then he sees something being pulled out and showcased on taylor's channel fantastic looking video different angles all that good stuff he's not really sure if he can trust what he's saying i mean on his channel you do get the occasional gear review but for the most part it's either a after the showing of his farm truck or b after a bunch of slick b-roll 
or C, it's gear that doesn't really seem to be put through any kind of use factor. Now, I have gone through that same type of situation here on my channel where you get some item i want to do a review i might test it for a week but i'll try to give you at least some feedback for it maybe some b-roll a lot of his stuff kind of seems to have transitioned away from that a lot of times the gear kind of just sitting in the video while he's talking about other stuff but is taylor martin really spreading or expanding everyday carry to the masses i would say no and here's why he is very dominant in the edc space sort of like John Gadget or Accessorize Me, but the biggest thing I would say is that it's not really expanding the community in regards to bringing more people into the functionality and the, and the practical nature of carrying EDC gear. It's kind of transitioning, feeding more of those who are already in the hobby, want to get in the hobby, and are going to spend a bag on some gear. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't think that expands it to the masses. Quite frankly, you really want some companies to invest more into EDC, pour more money into it, expand accessibility of it, get more females into the community, get more folks who can't afford certain type of knives into the community or make it more practical to carry this gear. And the type of content and stuff that he's posting, it's not really doing that. I have to label Taylor Martin as the chief cliche creator. There are tons of folks on Instagram, I being one of them in the past, who all want that dark, moody photo of their gear from their pockets or their bags. Most of it's snail trail free, full of titanium, overly priced, has a little bit of greenery, a little bit of smoke, very dark, moody photos. It's hackneyed. Everybody and their mom is doing it. Whatever he's doing, you can guarantee there's going to be at least 2,000 copycats right behind him on his coattails, trying to do the same thing through emulation. In my opinion, his videos are starting to come more about lifestyle EDC influencer type videos versus instructional, educational, or highlighting the value in gear. And when those value videos do come around, they seem to be kind of unused, sent to you, untested. Now, don't get it wrong. I don't mind the intro with let's do the damn thing roll the b-roll i think you're transitioning to a tv show versus an edc smorgasbord of information which one do you want to be that's up to you start off with your intro run your b-roll get into the content that can get hackneyed pretty fast but like i say this is not your first rodeo now i will say that the edc community for a lot of us is a hobby but for me i believe that it is function first hobby second and channels like taylor martin and the best damn edc are kissing up closer to hobby first function second i don't know if that's necessarily a good thing you may disagree you're more than welcome to let me know that down in the comments but absolutely no issues because there's going to be hundreds of people simping in his comments anyway so another reason i would say that he's not driving edc to the masses because whenever he shows a piece of gear instantly or often either the price of that item goes through the roof or it becomes sold out so if you're trying to show us the functionality as you did three or four years ago as the big griffin pocket tool it was sold out for a very long time now you can go pick it up on amazon pretty easily but he has since long past items like that if you're trying to show me the functionality of the tpt slide or of the garage built gear mighty pouch or something similar to that as soon as you show it it is gone why would that be beneficial to the community case in point i show the video to folks who have no clue who he is some are women different skin tones some black and white and a lot of folks are like, this stuff seems overpriced. I would like some of it. But A, the sense they got was a lot of stuff was sent to him and he's never used it before. B, if he has used it before, it was for the purpose of that video. And C, he had to pump out a video a week. And this is what he was talking about for that specific week. And that was the same sentiment I got over and over and over. These are from folks who had no clue who he was. So what would be my advice for those trying to enter the space or if Taylor, you ever watched this video, try to get away from videos that feel like you gotta knock this out. Some of your videos, at least from those that I've shown it to, feel like, ah, I gotta get a video out, spend three days or a week or however your posting schedule is. It feels like I need to post a video. Let me go ahead, turn on the light, turn on the camera and get her done. Try to get away from the get her done type aspect of your video. Maybe get away from your studio more. Maybe get away from your intro or go with a GoPro. Soften up your image. I don't know. 
that would be my first bit of advice. But like I say, this is not your first rodeo. You've already got this shit figured out. I'm just telling you this feedback that I got from others. Secondly, if you can roll in some B-roll of you using this crap, you know, cutting cardboard, snapping zip ties. I think you did a lot of that in the past. You're not really doing that anymore. So when I show this to strangers or folks that don't know who you are, they feel like you're selling them on something. You know all the specs about it, but that doesn't mean you've used it. Give us a little bit more of the juice so that folks know that it's worth the squeeze. Get closer back to really showcasing EDC for the masses. I think you're very tailored no pun intended, to folks that are already in the community, already into the hobby, not necessarily the person that's trying to get rid of their utility knife by Milwaukee and carry a real knife. Show some of the utility of carrying something like that versus the items that you show. But this is nothing that you need to hear from me, sir. You seem to already have this shit down. Another reason I think that the best damn EDC and Taylor Martin are not the best for the EDC community is he dominates the space. What does that mean? That means that other channels that I've been watching for a very long time they seem to have a ceiling. When you search up an item that you want to see on YouTube, his stuff is kind of always at the top of the algorithm. Now, this is just really particular for us YouTubers, may not pertain to the masses. That means that other folks that are creating different type of content are going to have this hard ceiling of a couple thousand subscribers or, you know, 10,000, 20,000 subscribers uh, or a few thousand views on their videos and never be able to break through that threshold. Another thing for specifically for the EDC community, I think that he's normalizing a certain style of video. Hypocrite might be me for this video because I'm literally in my studio just talking to the camera, but I do like mixing it up. He mixes it up sometimes as well, but for the most part, him three or four camera angles, got a, a editor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Same thing with a lot of these channels, either someone talking to the camera or someone just showing their hands and showing off some knives, not really expanding and trying to do anything more than that. I don't know if paving the way as that type of trailblazer is the best for the community. The other people in this space that are kind of breaking through and kind of like peeling the mold back when it comes to the EDC space other than Taylor Martin are folks that have a totally different type of style than he does. Maurice Moves has a way faster pacing, different editing style. John Gadget has a whole different type of variety of content that he shows on his channel, and he has an awesome accent. You also have folks like Accessorize Me, who in and of himself is his own type of brand, but he's always slapping shit around the screen. Three different styles of content, but everybody else that falls in that Taylor Martin space, your stuff's not going to be seen on the YouTube algorithm unless you do something crazy, like with your thumbnail or your title. That's about it. Another complaint I got from those that I showed the video is that his videos don't really seem to go that deep. I've already talked about how to kind of change it up a little bit, but one of my buddies commented and said that he felt like it was the blind leading the blind. Now he's a prior Marine, but a lot of times if people don't know your background, they don't know why they should follow you or they should listen to you. They kind of do get that feeling of the blind leading the blind. I myself have no clue why I should take advice from Taylor Martin in the best damn EDC other than the fact that he has a lot of gear and he likes to be outdoors, I guess because he's used it a lot. But give me more meat and potatoes about you in the background every now and again, not every freaking video. My channel is called Marine X. You can almost guess my background. But for yours, sir, I, I don't know what it is. And for the new viewer, I would just for, hate for them to come up on your channel, see some gear, wonder why they should follow you, and then move on. Now, I call him the chief cliche creator because one of my favorite soap boxes to climb up to on this channel every now and again is just things that make no sense at least for functionality with edc you've heard me talk about it before i'm going to be making a video here soon about de-influencing some of the things that you should not carry but titanium everything and bees and lanyards and pocket art and trash and all that type of stuff he's a contributor to that a lot of stuff is being spent a lot of people are missing obligations because they're going from functionality in their edc to hobbyists entirely too quickly sometimes it's because of taylor martin in the best damn edc now i have to keep it real with y'all me making these videos is my creative outlet my day job doesn't really allow for a creative outlet. I'm an auditor by trade, professor by trade. So a lot of times there's not really any room for a big creative outlet. So I make these videos for that type of stuff. People in the EDC community, whether they're hobbyists as well, that sometimes that's their creative outlet. But I don't want people that are using this for a hobby to be led down a path that's going to cost them tons of money or they're going to take them to fads or they're just going to fade away. 
Finally, I kind of have a big bone to pick when it comes to your collaborations and to your merch. Some of your stuff is re reasonably priced. I have your carry commission bum bags, only 40 bucks. It digs into the neck. I've done an entire video on it if you want to check that out. But some of your items are just out of this world pricey. And I think it's because of your brand, your name, some of the designs, the materials. But it doesn't need to be. I mean, $380 flashlights and super expensive utility knives and knife rolls and all sorts of stuff that are just entirely too expensive. Too goddamn highs, some folks would call it as well. And I don't think they need to be there. And they're there because you can get it and you can make it that price. Doesn't mean you should. That type of stuff can lead to a toxic nature in the EDC community where everyone feels like they need to bump up their prices. Look at these knife makers. At the end of the day, they're using the same materials. You're getting steel from the earth. You're heating it up. You're creating an edge. You're putting it between some scales. Scales, you're opening it up and cutting shit. Prices for knives are going through the roof because these knife makers feel like that folks in the EDC community are a bunch of marks. Taylor Martin, you're making us look like a bunch of freaking marks. I just don't want more people getting into the EDC community that are making vapid, disingenuous content just to extract dollars from the community because... <laughs> It can definitely happen, and I would not necessarily always want to be the guy that has to worry about that. I'm just telling you that the way things are going now in the best damn EDC, it may not be the best for the EDC community.